Well, good evening, everyone, and we thank you for participating in this Lynette's conversation, captivating conversation. This is our 20th talk, and I am so excited. So can we all give each other a hand to say thank you all for just being who you are, really. This has been awesome. Okay, so before we start, um, I just want to thank my sister. She's not on, but she gave me, the, she sent me these beautiful flowers this uh, afternoon along with a wonderful note. So I wanted everybody to, Lisa, do you have um, the, uh, the note? Cause it, I, I took a picture of everything and also the note, so. Mm, let's see. If you can share it. If not, I can, I'll read it, but. Um, you can't read it, you can't. Wait a minute, let's see. Let's see. Okay. <sighs> Let's see. Let me move this over. And I think I got it here. Can y'all okay. see my screen? Yes. And did you know? That's what my sister sent me. Isn't it beautiful? It is yeah. absolutely beautiful. <laughs> and then she sent me a card as well. Do you have the card, Lisa? Because I really wanted you all to see the card. And this is what it says. Congratulations. What started out as a book discussing discussion has grown into a ministry of support, healing, discovery, wisdom, and fellowship. To God be the glory. Continue to hear God and soar. Happy 20th talk. So proud of you, lovingly, your family. So I was just like overwhelmed. And thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been great. It has, I can't believe it's been 20, uh, 20 weeks of talk. So I'm just grateful for everybody again for coming on and uh, just participating and, and celebrating. So hopefully we might make it to 50. I'm, I'm hoping that we will. I'm praying that we will. And if we will, then we'll have a huge celebration because that's next, that's next, um, it should be next year sometime. So let's start our prayer and then we'll start our party. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am so overwhelmed with just thankfulness, gratefulness for um, what you have done in this talk, what you have um, created. Uh, never did we think that this would even happen, but we know that all things are possible through you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that this particular uh, party, and it is going to be a celebration of party, um, that we fellowship together, that we have such a great time together, that we reminisce on what has been in the past and we look forward to the future because we know that you are guiding and directing through your Holy Spirit. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus Christ's name, Yahshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, so we're going to start off with questions first. And actually, because of the time, it's, it's 10 questions. So we're not going to be able to do the questions and everybody answer each question and do the, the, uh, the games that uh, Lisa, not Lisa, Kim uh, created. So what I'm going to do, I have this bowl. Now, before I start, does everybody have their goodies to eat? Because I'm, every, someone came on earlier. Uh, Sylvia, you are muted and we can't see you. But I have, I'm just going to let you know what I have because I've been on a fast and I'm thankful. This is a celebration. This is two celebrations for me. This is a celebration of the book and the talk and the celebration because I've been on a fast for 30 days. And God has been doing some amazing things. I'm telling you, I recommend a fast because when you fast and you're faithful, God will show you some things. So in the process, I got my favorite stuff, which is the cheese, the crackers. I even made some chocolate strawberries and some grapes. So hopefully you all got your stuff because I also have a cupcake. So I'm going to celebrate with you. I'm going to light that at the end. And everybody, this is sparkling cider. So if you have your drinks and you can, we can eat and drink and play as we go along, okay? So let's try. Now there's a lot of noise in the background. Someone has... Um, can you see me? No, Sylvia, I can't see you. I don't know why. I'm always messing okay. up here. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we, we'll wait for you. Either, either you heard me or you don't hear me. You see me. Okay, well, we can on. hear you, dear. We can hear you. Yes, <laughs> we can hear you. We can't see you, but we can hear you. So you can still participate, okay? All right. So this is the first question. 
It says, we are in our planning stage of putting together seminars that will be centered around the book, Ice Cream Sunday, Mary. Should we continue as a gathering as a family to help learn from one another as couples, singles, or divorced, or should there be a separate seminar for married couples, singles, and those who are divorced? So can, I'm gonna pick, well, you all, two people, what do you think? And then we'll go on to the next question and then we'll go on to a game. So can anybody answer that? What, what do you think? Cause this has been great right here, but what do you think? Cause going forward, we're going to change some of the formats that we're doing. Can, can I say something Lynette? Absolutely. You know, I, I was gonna, you must been thinking of my mind because mm -hmm. I had already, when I was reading some of your stuff, and the book says, um, this is for, you know, like couples, but you can kind of make it singles input. But to me, it looks like more couples issue, but a single person can come in and bring his, what, if he's been married, his, 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 um, his ideas, what he's going to to the ministry. That's what I'm saying. Okay, good. Yeah, because this is working right here. But anybody else? Can anyone else? Read I would like to say I, I agree with him. I um, I I've been busy like everybody else. I've been busy, and sometimes I miss the meetings. I'll wake up the next morning and say, "Oh my God, I missed it seven o'clock." Mm -hmm. But what I found is that um, I am my heart is really really warm to see the couples that are together and working together and living together and growing together. But mm -hmm. I am single and I feel like, like I'm not a mother. So I don't give advice to mothers <laughs> and I'm not married. So I definitely don't give advice to married people. So I think there should be a separation of singles and married couples, but just with the issues that we deal with, because I, I was thinking that I may not be participating anymore because I just didn't feel like I had anything to add mm -hmm. because Always. I'm single. And some of the stories I heard was so touching about their past. And I felt like I was in another world because my, my life has been of a single person for all my life. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want to contribute, but I feel like I have nothing to contribute because I'm not married. Okay. So mm -hmm. let me speak to that. Because yeah. this is um, for, the book is, was written for married, single and divorced people. And the reason why it was done that because I'm divorced uh, Pat and Steve are married, and who's single? Kaylin and who May. else is single on here? Okay, yes. Oh, May. So we contribute. We, as we, as I said before, this is a community. This is a family, and I think that Steve, he hit it on the nose. He called me one day. He said the same thing. He said, "Lynette, I'm. I think I'm going to get off the talk because I feel like I'm not contributing, or I don't know uh, what to say." But this is what, um, and I don't see them anymore, Kenny and his wife. Kenny called me up. That's the new couple that came on last week. And he said, um, he said, tell Steve that he is a wise man, that what he's saying contributes to this conversation. That was just confirmation for him. And a lot of times, again, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to speak to you, especially you, Jazzy, because you have a lot to offer. You, you really yeah. have had a great deal to offer. You may not know it, but I think sometimes the enemy will get in our heads and, and he'll, he'll speak to us and say, oh, you're not doing that or you're not contributing. That's not true. Anybody on this panel can, uh, can attest to what you have said in the past, your experiences, so I think that um, just like Steve, we, if, we do, if we don't allow the enemy to come in like a flood and tell us who we are not, but we tell him who we are, then we are helping other people. This whole talk from last week to, to the past week has been so impactful that I have gotten so many calls and emails and, and texts from people who have shared their stories. Not only that, they want to continue to share their stories. That's what got me. I was like, Lord, this is this is something right here. So I, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but you have a wealth of information to give us, Jazzy. You really have. And, I, and I'm grateful for it. So Can I say something? Anyone else? Know? Yes, yes, Pat. Mm -hmm. Pat. Oh, okay. Um, I, I just wanted to say, yeah, um, I think there's been a 
benefit in singles being together, but there's also benefit in singles um, communicating with married folks sometimes. Because just because we're married doesn't mean we're perfect. We go through, we have gone through, still going through things. Um, you know, it may not be in a single status, but we still go through things and we can contribute maybe to benefit them. Right. And they, there's some things that they say that Hold benefit on. us. So I haven't, you know, looked Hold at on. it a certain way. Hold so on. I think it's benefit to separation and there's benefit to coming together on certain topics to communicate as well. Anyone else? Ignore that. Excuse me. Yeah. Ignore that. I'm in a statement. I don't gave away something. Okay, no. Go ahead, and, go ahead on and talk, though. Go ahead and, and say what you need to say, Kim. No, 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 no. It was, I made oh. a statement sent a chat. Oh. I didn't mean to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Before it got go something on? to do with the book. <laughs> it, it got okay. something to do with the book. Lisa, can you speak? Uh, I have to get this. Can you speak on that for Jazzy? I think that um, we not only uh, speak about couples and married couples, but we speak about relationships. Singles have relationships too, even though they're not married. I mean, I think we can learn from everybody. And I wouldn't want um, anyone to feel like they're not contributing. Whatever you have to say is very important. And you never know, you might be speaking something that somebody, somebody else was thinking, but just was too afraid to say anything. So I would want you to still stay. Thank Don't you. go. <laughs> you, you could learn, we could learn from you and you can mm -hmm. learn from us. Yes, absolutely. Anyone else? Because I just, and speak to Steve as well. Oh, well, go ahead, Kim. Oh, no, I want to just say the diversity because everyone learn from each other, whether you're single, divorced, married, or whatever the case, you can always learn from each other. Married people can still learn from single people and vice versa. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, as they said, Jazzy, um, I do believe you bring a lot of wealth of information. A lot of people, it's, and also um, Robin and her husband, I love the, the married couple. They bring wisdom and knowledge as well. And also um, Kaylin and Tiffany are young, so they get the bulk of all of it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it gives them the experience of how to see it from our, all our different age groups. So yep. they get to see it from, mm -hmm. it's just diversity. So, yep. you know, and uh, we, we don't only always stay on topics of the relationship. We have talked about abuse or, you know, from, you know, a lot of things. Exactly. So, you know, it, you know, it, it just, yeah, we, you are needed. Everyone is needed on this platform. And because mm -hmm. of being also look at it, go out into the world onto the different platforms. So many different people seeing it. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a diversity. So yeah, yes, hopefully is. no one feel that way. <laughs> yes. So Jazzy, we love you and we need you, girl. <laughs> okay. So the next question is, what about the book Ice Cream Sunday Marriage resonated with you the most? Can someone answer that? Oh, yeah. Can someone answer that? I'm going to pick someone. I'm going to pick two people at a time, okay? And then we're going to go. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany, let's start with you. One, the question one more time, sorry. What about the book Ice Cream Sunday Marriage resonated with you the most? Um, I would say definitely um, the communication portion of, you know, with the incident with the two women that ended up being married to the same guy um, or being with the same guy and they had similar situations because neither of them had had the talk with him prior to them um, being together. So mm -hmm. I would say communication and asking the appropriate questions up front, <laughs> so that you don't have to find out some of the answers down the line. Okay. Um, Kaylin, what about you? I think the incorporation of Bible verses. Um, a lot of times I know personally, like I'm still in my spirituality and like having Bible verses to reference with some of the scenarios, that's, it's very, it's a key point. Okay, wonderful. 
Anyone else before we go on? All righty. I'll say something, you know, man. Yes, Steve. Yes. Well, the, the book covered it all. There was the religious, as believers, we have to realize we have a relationship with God, whether we know it or whether we are aware of it. When we get into human relationships, it comes out in good, and sometimes we have to face the consequences of the mistakes we made, but if we read through the Bible, we read through this book, it's better to read it than have to experience bad consequences. Now, the life of consequences are fine, and the book points out there too. So uh, I like a happy ending most of all the time, but I can always learn from somebody. All right. Just let me say this. Um, everybody looks so beautiful on here with your white on. So, it, I mean, you should, well, everybody can see each other and it is, it's a beautiful thing to see all of you all. I thank you all for dressing up. So next year, hopefully we can all get together and we'll do another white party and um, we'll be as a, as a, actually as a family. So thank you all for doing this. Okay. So Kim, let's go to a game. Okay. So I actually made a mistake the first time. But in a way, this is what um, the game is going to be. So you know how we are always on the Zoom, um, no matter whether it's in this Zoom or other Zoom, you know how you get ready to talk and we can't hear you or you're just talking and you're muted. So we want to play a game called Read My Lips. So this is how I go. I give you one minute, and I don't know who would like to volunteer to put yourself on mute, and then you speak. I'm going to send it to you in a chat, and you, you know, say it, but we have to read your lips. So I'll pick someone or whoever wants to go and raise your hand, and you would try to see what she, someone's saying. You try to, you know, figure out what they're saying through being muted. Okay, so now Kim, funny. before you start, what where does it where do we reference it? Is you said it's in one of the chapters or it's Almost, just random? Oh, it's okay. And in, in, in the topic is coming from out of the book and is one of the titles. So um, if you read the book or you know, thumb through it or whatever the case, it's one of these titles in the book. I wanted to keep it kind of short. I didn't want to go into, you know, but we don't have a whole, whole lot of time. So who would like to volunteer to be the one that, um, I'm gonna send it to you in the chat and you're going to be on mute and you're going to read what I send you. And someone have to just try to figure out through lip reading what they're saying. Anyone, anything, Lisa. Okay, let me change this over. So, I just sent it. Okay. Put yourself on mute. <clears throat> okay. So, y'all pay attention. Do it again, Lisa. So whoever figured <laughs> they can figure out what she's saying, saying is one minute. Oh, I know. Tell her to, try, tell her to do. Oh, you got it. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Tiffany Somebody says she got it. it. Hold on. Let me put you. Let me put you on timer just in case you don't. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> It was don't bite into it. That forbidden fruit will kill you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, that's so <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> oh, that was that was quick. That so, was quick. That was okay. A good one. You ready? Do it another one, uh, Kim. We're we ready. do another one. Yep. So, mm -hmm. who would like to be the next one that do the loop <laughs> service? No one, no volunteer. You want me to do it again? <laughs> I can if you want me to. Oh, okay. Tiffany. Okay. Tiffany. Okay. So let me 
let me put it, I didn't know what type this one, but let me put it in there. Let me change it over for this. <laughs> so let me put it in. Okay. <laughs> We can't hear you, Miss Lynette. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Oh, I thought you were saying something when you were on mute. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's Kim, Kim is running it now. Go ahead, Kim, with the game. I just sent it to you, Tiffany, you get it? Okay, so pay, pay, everyone pay attention. Go ahead, Tiffany. And do it again. So do we don't want to think that they got that one? <laughs> Y'all need her to do it one more time? One more time. Yes. Tiffany, come into the camera a little bit so maybe they get hit ahead. Anyone? Any takers? Anybody want to try? You can look at the book now. You can look in the comments. Oh, no, the we can't talk about such things. <laughs> Lisa, <laughs> yes. Did I get it? Yeah, yes. I got it. Okay, wow. That's good. All right. Um, Kenneth and uh, Renee, you all are muted. Take yourself off a of mute. Okay, so I'm going to ask another question then. We're going to go to the other question. Are you ready? It says, which conversation made you think about your past, present, and future relationships? And has it changed your way of thinking since you've been participating on this talk? Anyone? Can you repeat the question? Sure. I mean, which conversation on the Zoom talk made you think about your past, present, and perhaps future relationships if you're not married? And has it changed your way of thinking since you have been participating on this talk? I can go. Okay, Kayla. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember the week, but the conversation, it was probably like one of the ones when I started coming on about um, waiting in marriage, waiting for sex. Mm -hmm. I think when um, Kashi and Tony shared their story, that made me rethink everything and then going forward like wow there really are people you know that think like that and are willing to wait for you so that that was a game changer and that changed the way I looked at relationships wow man that's an awesome thing that's okay. great see this is this is changing people this is great wow thank you Kayla like that. thinking back like making those mistakes like since I didn't wait in past relationships I think that that was one of the huge aspects on why they fell apart so okay so you recognize that wow and that's a game changer right there that is yeah it really is thank you for saying that Caitlin wow this is awesome oh goodness gracious wow I'm about to cry y'all come on now okay anyone else <laughs> anyone else before I uh Cheryl how about you I think are you frozen or are you frozen Cheryl where are you at I don't know. She went away. <laughs> she went away. Okay. How about you, Sylvia? You're muted. Take yourself off a of mute. We have to read our lips now. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. <laughs> You're on mute. You are muted. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to come back to her until she she, she gets off a of mute. That's Cheryl. You're on Cheryl mute, too. Cheryl is muted also. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna get back to you too, Cheryl. Okay, Z, let's get to you. How about you, Z? Um, and what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> the question is, what conversation made you think about your past, present, and perhaps your future relationships, and has it changed your way of thinking since you've been participating on the talk? Um. Um, I can't think of one right now. You can come back or ask me another question, please. Okay. 
All right. How about uh, Steve and Pat? How about Steve? How about you? Steve who? Steve uh, and Pat. Okay. Everybody's getting uh, frozen tonight. Yes, I noticed. What is that? Okay. We're going to go back to Cheryl then, since Stephen, oh, I can't believe it. Really <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay. you. I think, too, the, when we had the conversation about, uh, I think it was, if your child was drowning or something, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and your spouse was out there or something. Child. Yeah. And child, who would you say? Okay. And... I, that kind of opened up my eyes, even though you know that dear, um, when you marry someone that you put, you know, what, biblically what you say for him to say that and say it with so much affirmation, you know, without any hesitation of who he would say, mm -hmm. that kind of, that was a, a wonderful conversation and an eye opener and also the one we just recently had about abuse mm -hmm. where, you know, I, I didn't intend to talk about that, but it just kind of came out. That's right. Um, same thing happened on, I think it was last week's conversation. So those mm -hmm. two, one were really, really um, She froze. They froze. She froze. Okay. She froze. Okay. Kinda, you know, I really enjoyed those conversations. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, how about you, Steve? See him? Me? Steven. Steven. Well, Steve with Pat, oh, your husband. Your no. husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was the one about when we talked about what Pat was talking about. Um, if I was an expert swimmer and Pat and either my son or daughter was out there in the water and got caught up in a riptide, which one would I save? And I know that, you know, you're, you're, the way the world thinks in the earthly realm, the first thing they want to do is to try and save the child. Mm -hmm. But when you're in the biblical aspect of things, God says, when I put you and her together as one, whatever God put together, let no man set asunder. So you got to consider your wife being the most valuable part of you than ever, than anything. Nothing comes before her, God, than your wife. So mm -hmm. nothing else comes before her. So if, if it was her or my child, it was two kids out there with her, I would save my wife first. And then if I could, I would save the child. Mm -hmm. But okay. she comes first. Wow. And that's that's admirable. It really is. And it's biblical. That's what you said. Uh -huh. We have to, like I said, at the end of the day, no matter what opinions people have, we are going to go Bible. That's the, the Bible has the final say for us because that's our belief. And, and one more thing I like to say, Lynette, you, you're yes. single ladies, Kaylin, Miss Jazzy, and the rest of the Me too. single ladies, if you marry and your husband don't put you first, then there's a problem, okay? Think about that. <laughs> there is a problem. You're supposed to come first. That's right. After God, then there's you. Then there are the kids, okay, if they're in. But if he don't put you first, if he put his mom there or his dad or his sister or his brother, there's a problem. That's that's right. that is. Thank you for that, Steve. Now, that's just confirmation, really. And, and I'm so thankful coming from a married man. And that's what he believes. That's what that's what the Bible says, you know. And and you feel secure, I think, as a woman, when you know that your husband is putting you above everybody else except for God. That's security in the relationship. So that's a beautiful thing. Thank you so very much for that, really. Anyone else before we go on to the next question? Oh, Cheryl, let's, let's uh, finish you. It says, keeping with the theme of relationships. Oh, no, no. Let's go back to this one. Uh, which conversation made you think about your past, present, or perhaps your future relationships? And has it changed your way of thinking since you've been participating on this talk? Um, I like the one about chivalry. Does that still exist? 
Mm-hmm. And why? Because it should, and I really didn't think that it did because it hasn't been practiced as much as it did it used to be. So when we talked about it and the guys said that what they would do in a relationship, it, it just made me feel like, you know, I can, I can stay in now. You know, I don't have to settle for anything. I could still get the best. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yes, indeed. Anyone else? Thank you for that. That's great. Okay, so we're going to have one more question. Then we're going to another game. It says, keeping with the theme of relationships and building a better family and community, what topics would you like for us to approach that people rarely talk about? Anyone? If you don't, if you don't the young lady, can I say something? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Kate, where is she jumped around on me? Where's Caitlin? Where's she going? She's to? over there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, Caitlin. Um, yeah. You know, I uh, I heard her her last comment on that. You know, that it's it's a good thing to wait, but and I and I I don't want to be a you know pessimist about, mm-hmm. but at this age, at sixty three. Even if I would have made different choices, I don't blame the a man or whoever I was dating. I blame that I just was not educated by what I needed. Because one subject that people honestly do not speak on is the difference between the sexual needs of a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. So when you speak of someone waiting, yeah, we women, we can hold down till we get ready. But men have a different agenda because whoever taught them did not give them the heart of a letting them know a heart of a woman is all about love and being back, you know, got your back when their goal is to conquer. Yeah. So honest conversation, especially in the black community, mm-hmm. because our young, beautiful black girls are falling for the same thing that the last oh, generation right. fell for. And and I'm, I said it to say this. The young men are listening to their older black brothers telling them how to deal with a young girl or a woman, and no one's telling the truth. Men are visual, men are more physical, and when they come at you, of course, because they're attracted to you. But you tell them to wait till you get married and see what happens. I had it too many times. It's good men, bad men. They if I said no, you gotta wait a year, they out the door before I could say the last sentence. Yeah. And that's the reality of it. And then okay. and then all these other things come into play about truth and honesty about it. I mean, men play this, women play games, so don't get me wrong, but I'm just pro-woman. Mm-hmm. But the serious conversation should be with these young, beautiful black women that we love different than men love. Some men don't even know, and, and we're all adults here, they think we're something else. And we need to stop faking it. And, make, and the, I mean, listen to the songs that the young people sing to each other. And women, women go, you know, thinking that, you know, young girls, beautiful girls who, who should have a future with a good man and have, have a family, if that's what they choose. But the reality is men don't tell the truth about their needs, about their wants and their desires because they want you to have the same need and the same want and the same desire. And most my 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 what my experience was, we just different. I'm to, I'm about paying some bills, my bills, my bills, <laughs> not his, having my own and taking care of my business and loving my family. And that's the part that I never found in my 63 years that a man was responsible enough to be truthful about what he needed and what he wanted and what was his desire. Can Sorry, I, I didn't mean to talk that long. Okay, hold on one second. Um, hi, well, well, let me say something uh, to Jazzy. I want the men, uh, Kenneth, and I, I'm just asking them first, Kenneth and Stephen, and um, who else is on here? The men, um, Tony and yeah. Stephen, Stephen, I want you all to address what she just said, please, one at a time. 
Start with you, uh, Steve, and then uh, Kenneth, and then come to Tony, and then Stephen, please. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad she, she pointed out and said what she had to say. I think we yeah, men, we're led by, by physical. Most of the time, we, get in, we might get into things that we don't know what we're getting into, but we just see that attraction and we want it to work. And, and, and most of us, if we were responsible, we're going to do whatever we can to get the lady. And if things work out, we're going to try to do whatever we can to keep the lady. And like the man pointed out, if it was between he and the child, he going to save his wife. And we like a love story. A forever love story, just like like I would think women like, but we might go physical first, and if that's appeasing to us, hey, when the ladies start getting older in two or three years, five years, ten years, hey, if I'm deeply in love with that woman, I don't care what she looked like, as long as she tries to take care of her her health and her appearance, it's fine with me. If I gotta make some changes. And she tell me that, well, you can be a little more attracted or you can clean the house more. And I'm seriously in love with that woman. I'm going to make some changes. Compromising, nothing wrong. That ain't compromising. That's just loving somebody. Okay. And I hope you find that man that really, that really love you. Because I know the author. And I know if you communicate it to him, hey, he going to be on the ball. And he ain't going to okay. run he ain't going to run, because once we get tied to a woman that we really like, like those soul tied, we get tied to a woman, I don't think we're going to run from it. Okay. We, Thank we, you for we that, brave. Steve. We are brave. <laughs> we ain't no cowards. Okay. We ain't no cowards. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Steve. Um, can I hear from the rest of the men as well, please? I'm not yeah, negating um, the women, but I just want to hear from the men, because you have to. I would love for you to address what she just said, please. <laughs> Can you okay. hear me? Yes, uh-huh. We can, can hear Well, she was focused on talking to the young men, and I can just speak for myself. I was raised by my great-grandfather, great-grandmother. My great-great-grandmother was in the house raising me, too, and my mother was next door. But I never saw my great-grandfather show affection to my great-grandmother. I never saw them hug, kiss, hold hands. He really didn't open doors for her. He didn't do affectionate things. He didn't give her gifts on her birthday that I seen, you know, Christmas gifts, that type of thing. And a lot of us young men, we wasn't taught how to show affection to a woman. We wasn't taught, we automatically not thinking like a woman. We already built different, our minds are different. But if we're not taught and groomed how to treat a young lady, then yes, when we see a young lady, the main thing is the physical attraction. She got a flat butt, I want to get with it. That's what the way we think. And so when we going out on a date or we trying to take her out, our intentions are to try to have sex with her. We wasn't taught anything different. And it's just your human response. When you're a teenager, when you're a young man and you got those hormones, that's just a human thing. It's just natural. But me personally, myself, God blessed me with my wife when we was 14 years old. And from seeing, my mother had five brothers. And from seeing how they were with women, from seeing how men were in the black movies that was coming out back then, like Superfly, Chef, and all of that, pimp movies, I just knew I didn't want to mistreat women like that. I didn't want to treat women like that. And when God gave me my wife, I just, I loved her and I wanted her to know that I loved her. I wanted to be kind to her. I wanted to treat her good. So I, I focused on doing that. I started reading books and looking at certain movies and try to figure out how I could do opposite of what I didn't like. And I, I just showed you know affection the best way I could. But after reading the book and my wife asked me questions because at the end of the chapters, it had questions. She said, do you think... And I say yes. She said no. You're not. She oh, said wow. thank you. She went. Mm. Dude, she you're said, going you're in not. and out. So um, now some more work because I thought I was.
but I spend more time with the young man. Um, Can you hear me? You're going it in keeps and out. going in and out. Yeah. And you're good. You Keep me? on rolling because this is good. This is good. Oh. You, you muted yourself oh. now. Oh, wow. Oh, you're in a freeze frame. Yeah. You know. Well, okay. you muted yourself there. Okay, we, we're going to come back to you, Kenny, because you have to turn back. Okay, um, how about you, Tony, and then Steve? Okay, um, yeah, I, I, as he was saying, oh. as he was saying about not seeing a lot of passion um, when I was coming out, my mom and my father, I didn't see a lot. I also saw a lot of abuse, so he's right about that. Um, and also, my grandfather, he raised me also uh, as I got a little older hang around him. I didn't see a lot of that with my grandmother and my grandfather. So it, he's really hitting it on nose when we don't see that. And sometimes we don't have that, that passion like women have, you know, because of what we saw, what we growing up on. But I know myself, um, you know, I always had it in my heart, even though I don't show it, but I have it in my heart to do everything I can to please my wife or my girlfriend when I, I've been married twice. So, you know, I've, I've been there, but divorce also. Uh, relationships. I've always had that um, making sure I gave and give and, and be there for her and listen to her. So I, I understand, uh, you know, what your, uh, the young lady was saying about, you know, saving herself. It, it's kind of hard. It's very hard as a man to not sustain from, you know, because we, we're, like I said, we're, we're physical, you know, and, and more women, they're more like, you know, we can, we can look at you, but we don't want to touch you, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I understand what she was saying. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Stephen Robbins' husband. Yeah, well, <laughs> all of us, when I grew up in a big family, there was seven boys, seven girls. So rather I seen a lot of affection coming from my father or not, there was something going on because there's a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. Back then when I was growing up, when, when my dad came home and when we came in the house or whatever, if, if they were going to be affectionate or whatever, we had to go outside. <laughs> they were like, okay, ain't you got something to do, boy? Uh, get out of here. Because even though I never seen him, you know, he probably, he would kiss her and stuff like that when he leaves to go to work in the morning. I've seen that. And she would press the shirts and all that stuff, piece of collars and cuffs, you know, that had their own way of showing how they really felt about each other, how they cared about each other. Now, the numbers speak for itself, so y'all do the math. But anyway, I grew up, even though I, I, I couldn't witness it and see them touching and hugging and kissing because they did all their stuff in the room or in the house when we weren't there. So, I'm not going to say that um, I grew up with a with parents that was unfectionate. Um, I'm sure they were, but I never seen it. But as I got older, and even in my first marriage, I'm just going to skip along. Um, I met my my um, first wife. She was nine years old, and I was 11. So I did not touch her. We might have hugged and kissed and stuff like that. We might got our emotions all flared up. But we never was intimate until we was up like maybe close to 20 years old, 18, 19, 20 years old. But I knew from being with her all that time, but that was the woman I wanted to marry. You understand? I knew. And we got married and years went on and we had a daughter and things went on and didn't work out quite right. I mean, you can't predict the future, but, you know, she wanted to, felt like, we got married so young and we never had, she never had chance to experience any other relationships. And sometimes people do that because this was all told to me by lawyers and stuff like that, counselors. Yeah. So, so she said, well, I never really wanted to experience any other relationship. You know, I was content. She was mm -hmm. a girl in my dreams, I was nine years old, but she felt like there was something she was missing. So it, it dispersed. So, and, and years later, you know, I end up, I met Rob and, and, and life goes on. God has a way of blessing the person that put the most into the relationship. Because see, I never wanted divorce. 
-hmm. And what God put together, he said, let no man ascend her. Right now, she's kind of still struggling in that area. Me, I'm content, I'm married, and I'm moving on. My life is great. I love it. So what I'm trying to say is, sometimes you might stumble across a few guys that all they want to do, and the men have that, you know, attack dog instinct, I guess it's something that that's in them. But sometimes you can find a man if he's willing to wait for you. You're going in he got to wait forever. Wants you or he cares about you. It does not take forever. And you don't have to give yourself in two months, six months, three months. If he really cares, he'll wait a year. If there's plans in there, if there's if there's some type of connection that y'all feel, ask the tough questions. That's what we fail at sometimes as men and women. We don't ask the tough questions because the tough questions might end up making you realize that it's not worth me laying down with him or him trying to persuade me to do this or that. Ask Amen. the tough questions. What are your goals? What are your plans for me? What are we going to do in life? How long mm -hmm. you plan on hanging around? Are you really interested in me? If he is, he'll wait. If he Maybe. cares, he'll wait. And That's if right. he don't, that may not be the one. Mm -hmm. Might not be the one. Yeah. Amen. Steve, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I'm, I'm going to say this, Robin, real quick, because that's what I was waiting for. That was the answer that I was waiting for, for Jazzy and anyone else. Because again, if that man is interested in you and he wants you, he will pursue you. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Okay. And if he wants you bad enough, just like Steve said, he will wait for you. If he does not, then that means that that person is absolutely not for you. And I think yes. we, as women, we settle. We want that person that that perhaps he may be pursuing us, but in not in the way that that he should. He's only mm -hmm. out for one thing. And when that happens, then we we're kind of like, okay, well, let me give in, let me compromise. And I I think Cheryl and I had a great conversation the other day. And I told her, I said, why should I have standards here? And then someone come along and they want me to lower my standards for them. Yeah. No, they come up or either same thing with him. If he's up here and his standards are high, then I have to come up. But no one should ever have to lower their standards for someone else. Okay. Uh, Robin? I was just going to say that um, I think we need to sometimes examine the difference between how young ladies are raised and how young men are raised. Because I think there's a disconnect in what we tell our young girls to do. You know, growing up, they have this princess, you're the princess, blah, 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 blah. You know, you know, wait, blah, blah, blah. But yet we tell our young men, go out, go get this, do that. Because, and I can tell you from my own home, my experience, you know, my dad told me, hey, you better not go out and do nothing. But he told my brother, hey, hey, man, you at a certain age, you're supposed to be doing X, Y, Z. So there is a disconnect in families or in, in how we raise what we, you know, majority of the time, I can say all, oh, but majority of the time, what our expectations are for young men than there are for young ladies. And then when they get together or they're trying to date, there's, there's no balance, especially when they're young, because like you said, you have hormones in play. Young men, they want to conquer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> them, they're, they're yes. emotions. Are, you're going you know, in now too. They want to do some things because, but because they've been connect somewhere between what we tell our men and what we tell our women. And, and that, that's a problem. Yes, absolutely. Yes, Sylvia. Yes, uh, um, she's absolutely right. We was raised different. The boys were told one thing and the girl told another. Yeah. And back in my day, you weren't only told, you were told such, um, you weren't told hardly anything. All my mama say it was. You better keep your coattail down. Yeah. What, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I, did not, I did not know what it meant. Mm -hmm. And just not knowing what it meant, then the little boys 
fool you because you don't know what it be. Right. Yeah. And you told the surprise that they going to a place that you didn't intend to go. And before you know it, it's too late to stop what's, what's, what, what's going on because you told her, don't know what's happening mm -hmm. until it's all over. And then you say, oh my God, this, this is what it was, was, was what they meant. <laughs> and, but it wasn't explained to you yeah. uh, mm -hmm. as a young person. And, okay. and I just want to say, uh, that on the, to me, that on, doesn't only go for a younger person. Um, like I said before, you don't have to uh, 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 give up everything to have a relationship. And I truly believe that in my old age and I, and I stuck to that and I hung to it and I stuck with it. And I still believe that if, uh, if a person really interested in you, that they will respect your wishes. Mm -hmm. You don't want to, if you don't want to have sex with them uh, uh, without benefit of a, 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 a relationship that's, you know, that you can seal that relationship, that, that marriage or what uh, 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 you want, don't do it. Just, just, just stick, to, stick to your beliefs that you are worth more. Mm -hmm. That, like I said, People laugh at me all the time. I say, if I had my life to live with a kid, I'll be, I'll be married. I'll be a virgin. Because I wouldn't think no, I wouldn't think no man was good enough. They ain't Jesus Christ. They ain't good enough for me. That's that's how that's the feelings I got. People laugh. I'm with you, I Sylvia. People laugh. People laugh when I tell them that. But I said, I don't think no man would be good enough. Because he can't walk on water again. <laughs> Wow, that's something. <laughs> that is something. Wow. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I did have a um yes, uh, Kim. I mean, it, it, you know, actually to address Jazz and, and um I want to say Kachi um also the same thing, but it was for my my husband as well. She don't want but um my husband as well. Um I told him he was not. Well, before he was my husband, I was like, we're not getting ready to be doing none of it until we're married. And I said, but you know, this was my decision. You didn't make this decision. So if you want to go on about your way, you can go on about your way. And he was like, no, I want to stay. And mm. that's a thing too. When you know someone wants you, it don't matter. They're going to stick there with you. Mm -hmm. And my husband did it. Um, and I told him that don't mean you're gonna be going out missing with no one else just because you ain't getting it from here. But right. you know, and he was like, No, I'm, I'm not missing with anyone. I'm not trying to miss with anyone because I'm not trying to mess it up with you and I. Um, but also, as she said too, I know, and I have been there back in my days, um, you know, young, dumb, and stupid for men, thinking that if I give him sex, he'll love me. And if he mm -hmm. tell me he mm -hmm. loved me then he know he going to get sex. So he going to tell mm -hmm. me what he want me to hear to get what mm -hmm. he want. Yes. And men are visual. Men are visual and that's what they see, the beauty, the physical and everything. Because a man walking on, on you or approaching you can't see your heart. It that's takes right. time to get to your heart to see what type of person, how you are. And therefore, that's what you should wait. Because, hey, he may want to hit and bounce. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you know, you give him give him a run from his money, then he's gonna be interested in you. He's gonna be like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm curious about this young lady. Mm -hmm. I want to know more about it. She has yep. piqued my interest. So mm -hmm. it, it 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 can happen. It happened for me. And like I said, I believe um Kachi said Kachi and, and Tony, he yeah. Said, and he, sure did. He, he was about the same way. And yet his wife said, You yeah, you gotta wait, bro. So hey, <laughs> it mm -hmm. can happen. And and yeah. I don't want to say, Jazz, you're so beautiful. You don't even look sixty three. Mm -hmm. You are. <laughs> don't even. Would have never guessed it. <laughs> no, nope. you sure wouldn't. So, but yeah, I um, thank you. I thank you all for addressing that particular one because, like I said, I wanted uh, Jazzy. Uh, actually, I want to hear from uh, James. You're on mute. But I definitely want to hear from you as well. Uh, the the question is, and we're gonna continue this. It says, keeping with the theme of relationships and building a better family and community, what topic would you like for us to approach that people really talk about? Jazzy said, 
just give a give him a synopsis, real quick, Jazzy. Um, just tell him a little bit, and then he can answer it. Well, I just especially I just about the sex. Be, I think it should be just honest conversation on the difference between women and men, girls and boys, mm -hmm. to try to get to a point where we understand each other better of the physical and visual that men have and a woman needed with her heart and her mind and her soul. Right. And the difference between the two is men are taught, told one thing and like you all said, young girls are th told something and by the time we figured out you're around my age and you be going like, what was I thinking? But I don't blame my parents. I don't blame anybody. I think that we need to build our men up to say we're not valuing value. Your value is not what's in your pants. It's nowhere close to that. Amen. Amen. Nowhere That's close right. to that. And we get them to understand Amen. that men, they may, I guess, judge each other. I don't know. But we don't, <laughs> women, we don't judge you by, we judge your character, how you love your mother, how you love your children. We judge mm -hmm. you by you having a job and taking care of your business. But yeah, somewhere it got twisted where a young mm -hmm. girl can work a 40 hour week job. The young man mm -hmm. comes in and do a sad sock story and he gets to mm -hmm. sit there and play games on the computer. We mm -hmm. need to change the dynamics of that. <laughs> and on honest conversation on the difference that we're told. Yeah. And as far as sex is concerned, because James Kalen said that she appreciated our talk when we said that it's important for a woman to wait as far as sex is concerned and marriage. So can you address that as well? Well, first of all, um, hello everyone. I'm sorry I'm late, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but I had to work, so I'm just getting in and logged on as soon as possible. I so I apologize that. for being late. Mm -hmm. um, the, what I believe as a, as a structure, as a family, one of the things that I would like to see um, is actually the word of God coming back home to the word. And I believe that we need to make sure that that is something that we continue to talk about in great numbers so we can reestablish the order of things, which would be God, man, woman, child. Mm -hmm. I believe if we are able to establish these things, a lot of the things that we are also discussing Will actually be easier and come about easier because the order of things will be established first. Um, relationships to me is that, like she said, like Jazzy said, honesty is definitely a big key. Um, I believe also that you should be upfront, everything from about sex to about, you know, uh, finances and such is very important because if. When, as you grow, you grow older. And as you grow older, you become more set in your ways. Yes. Like, for example, myself, I'm 53 years old. But one of the things I have to remind myself constantly is that because I know I'm selling a lot of my ways, I have to keep an open ear to, let's say, a supposed spouse or a significant other because the body language, um, the talk itself is very important because I can't make all the decisions and I'm not gonna always be right. So we have to actually make sure that we also keep an open ear and be honest about ourselves with the relationships. But I strongly wanna see the establish of order, God, man, woman, child. Good, James, thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, anyone else before we go on? Okay, Tony and Kachi, they just came on as well, just real quick. Uh, we were talking about the waiting part. So uh, we appreciate you all, especially Tony, when he talked about the fact that he waited for Kachi um, to consummate their relationship. And uh, that's most important. Like James said, that's, that's biblical, you know, and we as a society, we want to go the other way. And, it's be, and especially because everybody seems to be doing that. But mm -hmm. we have to stick, like James said, we have to stick to what we know, what, what we believe, and let God do the rest. So do you all have thing? anything to say? Can oh, I say yeah. one more thing? Mm -hmm. Caitlin. It's yeah. Caitlin, right? Caitlin. 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 <laughs> if any time 
you need somebody to talk to, I please somehow know we exchange numbers because <laughs> I wouldn't. I a beautiful young black woman needs to have her value. Yes. So that you can keep that answer. No, I'm not doing it until I'm ready. I, yes. Because I'm telling you, it's, it's such a mind boggling thing that the media and everybody is telling you that this is where you live your life now. But mm -hmm. deep in your heart, you know what you want to do. And you want somebody to love you, but stick to that. Stick to your guns, girl. Stick mm -hmm. to them till you get married. You know, <laughs> so anytime you, know. you want to just vent so you can say no, please get my number. Call me. Thank you so, so much. We're going we to support you, girl. We'll be in your way. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. Thank you all, because this is a community. So, Jazzy, thank you for even reaching out to say that. That's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing, really. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Kachi, you. you all are on mute. Sorry about okay. that. Sorry for the delay. That's I have, I'm not exactly sure. What, I think we're talking about abstaining, or what are we talking That's what we're talking about. Or well, no, yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah. Until marriage. So, yeah. I just saw this meme just the other day, um, and it's like private property, no trespassing. So treat yourself, <laughs> your, your, your temple anyway, your, 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 your temple. Yes. So oh, it's that's private nice. property, no trespassing mm -hmm. until you know you say so. So mm -hmm. it's private property, mm -hmm. no trespassing. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I, like that's that. good. I like that. I like that I, one. I like that. I thought it was cute too. I said, "Prime I'm gonna give me a sign. No trespass. No trespass. No trespass. You get a T-shirt. Make T-shirts. Private property. No trespass. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. That's what you get. Yeah. Yeah. See, Lisa, you can do that because that's what she does. There you go, Lisa. Yeah. Private property. No trespass. No property. No trespass. Kaylee, you gonna get one. Yeah. Get. What's your birthday? What's your birthday? Christmas or something. April. I am God's child. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, God's okay. child, private property, no trespass. That's good. That's good, Lisa. Okay, so remember that, Lisa. Thank you, Kachi. You better thank Kachi for that, Lisa. Thank you, Kachi. <laughs> okay, Kim, we're ready for another we game. We had so much trouble logging in tonight. I'm sorry, but we're here. Okay, you're here. So that's the main thing. Yeah. Okay. Everybody okay. looks so beautiful. Okay, Kim, with second uh, game. Okay. Yeah, and I want to say cotton and my love. They are sitting. Yeah. Yes, it yes. is nice. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we um, did stay on topic for a while. So the next game we're going to do is called Story Race. What I'm going to do is do is it comes out of um, Lynette's book. It's out of one of the chapters. I'm not going to tell what chapter or anything. Um, I also want to throw a twist on it, but I actually, if you want to just stick with what, what I say and then you complete it, I'm gonna stop and then you finish it off. Um, but also we can throw a twist if somebody, you know, just got a creative mind and just want to flow with it, you can. So this is the storyline. It say, that's why taking a walk or meeting to have coffee is one of the best dates you can go on. Talk and get to know one another, observe how, and then you all finish it. It's actually in her book, but like I said, if you know and you read it, you finish it up. But then also I, I would like to take some creative thoughts or how you want to end it. So mm -hmm. do anyone possibly know what the um, ending part of it to finish that out? Y'all want me to give y'all a hint? Yeah. Look at page 13. If you got this book, page 13. Page 13. Does everybody have the book? I need more Can, you, can you hold up your book, please? Can everybody hold up their books? Had a good man. Great, great, great. I need great. more the book. Okay. I'm not one, home. At the end of the of this conversation, I want everybody to hold up their books at one time. Okay. So it's on page thirteen, Kim. Yeah, I just want to make sure because you know I got two versions. Okay, it's the <laughs> latest version. Okay. Oh, um, so yeah, page thirteen. Well, you, the, you have two versions, but it's the same thing. Remember? Okay. I didn't know if your pages was different, mm -hmm. but same it's page thing. thirteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to give them a minute. Yeah, I didn't put no time. I got it. 
Yeah. Who said? Who said I got it, Lisa? Wait a minute. Who else? Lisa, we're not gonna let you answer. I know, we're right? Gonna you, we're gonna hold off on you and Tiffany. Okay. Who else has it? Kaylin has Kaylin. it. Kaylin. And and so does Linda. So. Okay. Oh. Which one? Kaylin, you go first, and then Linda, you go. So it says, talk and get to know one another. Observe how he or she looks at you when you are talking. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So Linda, or I call you Renee. Okay. So give us another spin on that. Observe, uh, you're, you're on mute again. That, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it basically talks about the distractions. Uh, go where you can observe not only what he says, but how he says it and how he's focusing on you versus looking around, looking at other people, uh, you know, things going off in, in his head that would be a red flag to you saying he's a player or he's, you know, he's not really focused on what, on me. And I feel like a man and woman, when they become together, the first thing that should be established is uh, focusing on me type thing. And what you allow a man to get away with, they're going to keep doing it. And you can't you blame nobody say but yourself. That's yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay, so the next one. Thank you all. That's great. Thank you, Kaylin. Thank you, Renee. All right. Well, Kim? I want to do any, another one. That was it. And then she okay. just quit. One more thing, I, I take care of a 90 year old aunt. I have to get to her now because she goes to bed at 5 30, believe it or not, but I have to check on her. Okay, so, sweetie. Love y'all. We'll Thank y'all so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye Jesse. And okay, I we'll toast you now. Bye. Don't forget me, Caitlin. Anytime I can be an ear. Yes. We toast you now, Jazzy. You. We're going to toast you now, right. Jazzy, before you go. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, the next question is. What question in the 20 weeks are our talks, of our talks stuck with you the most and what conversation was the most memorable? Please explain why. Now we haven't heard from, yeah, Kim, but we haven't heard from uh, Tiffany a lot and, and Cheryl. So y'all need to come on. All right, but Kim, you were gonna say something. Um, I just say the, Last one that we had when I was actually in the car and when we was talking about the abuse mm -hmm. and um, when Tony was basically said it helped him, um, you know, what we were saying. And also uh, when I was talking about journaling, because I believe there's, you know, a way of freeing. Well, for me, I'm going to just speak for me and it may be different for other people. Um, journaling, um, a lot of times we have so much in our head. Everything is going on, life, work, children, household, whatever the case. And I kind of look at it like this. You have to put those in compartments, just like as far as a computer or however you organize things so it won't be all over the place. So when it's time for you to go to that, whatever it is or that situation, it's organized and you can kind of separate different things and not jump, it's not jumbled up for you. So when you journal, if things are um, jumbled up and you don't have a, um, it, you, it's just like, I'm gonna go crazy. It's just so much going on. You take, to me, you're taking those thoughts and put them on paper and you get them out your head. So anytime you need to go back, you can pull it back up and read it. You have separated. So therefore journaling is very important because you can put your thoughts on paper. And like I said, you know, that last one was like really deep. Oh, a lot, oh, to be honest, all of them are because it's just my observation in what I study. So all the conversations and the topics and things that we have discussed, the people's testimonies and everything has been like an eye opener, you know, but you know, also when you have men on the, the in the group, that really can open up and talk and express themselves and not feel like they're less than a man. That's very, very important. Amen. To me. 
So because mm-hmm. a lot of men make it feel like I can't speak out, I can't say this, they might think I'm a punk, I'm weak or whatever the case. Mm-hmm. No, it's the most beautiful thing to me when a man can express himself fully and not be ashamed of it and know that he's mm-hmm. still that man. man. Still that king. You get it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my Yeah. You muted. There was, yeah, I know there was there were sirens all over the place. Oh, okay. So I had to mute myself, but um, I want to go back to Kenny real quick. Uh, Kenny, can you finish talking? And and you told me something. That I just want you to tell them about how you knew that that was your that Renee was your wife. That how God showed you that Renee is your wife. Yeah, listen to this, guys. Really. Well, we was fourteen years old. My cousin is a couple of years older than me. He was born with her sister and I would go with him to her sister's, to her house. But um, actually I was, uh, I had the hats for another one of her sisters. I liked another one of her sisters, but I went home one night and God showed me that night on a big movie screen that she was gonna be my wife. He put her up there on the movie screen and he told me, that's your wife. And then the next time, the very next time I went to her house, her father, um, all out the blue, asked me, Kenny, who you come over here to see? And I said, Renee. She had no idea. She was outside. Her daddy called her in the house and said, Renee, you know he coming to see you? She said, no, sir. And her mama looked at me and said, well, she can't date till she turned 15. So I looked at her and I said, when you turn 15? She said, on my return. <laughs> I said, I'll be back on my return. But in between <laughs> then, we were writing letters every day and talking on the phone. So by the time my return came, I was already in love with him. Oh. And my cousin, because he was a few years older than me, he had a driver's license, but he didn't have any money. I had a job, I had money. So he would get his daddy's um, car on the weekends on Sundays. And we would go to the movies. I paid for the gas, I paid for his way my wife's sister's way, and then I pay for my way and my wife's way, and I buy all the food, all the drinks and everything. Until uh-huh. um, I turned 16. When I turned 16, my grandfather gave me a Buick, a Lecce 225. They call it a deuce and a quarter. A deuce and a quarter. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so then I was able to take her out on my own. But from the time that she became my girlfriend, she lived with her parents. They paid you know, the rent, the lights, and all of that. But personal things, I bought, I bought all her clothes, anything she needed, I bought it, I paid for it. She didn't have to worry about that. She didn't have to struggle because I loved her and I wanted her to have what she wanted and what she needed. And I guess that's what she wanted me to tell y'all. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> that's yeah. nice. Isn't it? That mm-hmm. is really great. I mean, that's a great, yeah. So that's love. I'm telling you, this man mm-hmm. right here, he loves his wife. And I think that's what Kaylin, you know, anybody else who is, um, wanting to get married again, Steve and and um, Kenneth, they're the two men up here that are married, and we, you know, we you would want to have men like that who would, and 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 Kachi and <laughs> Kachi and um, Tony as well. They love their wives, and you could see it. You could see how they treat their wives. You could see how they talk to their wives. <coughs> Like I said, it's a beautiful thing, and we should want that for each other, you know. And yes. and I'm I'm happy for anybody who will find that person, you know, in their life. And so if like Kaylin and and Tiffany, uh, who say that they definitely want to get married, I think we as a community, as a group, should be praying for them that God will send that person, that man, to them that is godly first, that knows the, the principles of. God first, the husband, the wife, and then the children. And thank you um, again, James, for reiterating that because we want to stick with that. And I, and again, thank you for that because we are going to be more um, concerned about what we talk about and how we talk about it. Even again, go back to whatever it is. We're gonna touch on any subject you want, but at the end of the day, we will talk about what does the word of God say? And we have to bring that back into our conversation. I'm not talking about anybody else's conversation, but it's gonna have to remain in this conversation as well. So 
Anyone else before I go to the next question? I think we have a couple more minutes left. Okay, it says, do you, here we go. Do you think our conversations have helped you and others and explain, explain why? Anyone? Y'all are really quiet. Cheryl, let me, let me get with you because you haven't said anything. Uh, so Cheryl, can you talk? Yeah, well, yes, I think that the conversations have helped me and helped others because there was a lot of things that I thought that I knew because I was had been in relationships, but then I found out by listening to the other people talk about things that they've been through. And I learned a lot and it's opened up my eyes to what now I know is the right way to go and the way that I want to go. So, and I know others, you know, feel the same way, you know, cause you don't know everything. You always got to be open to be teachable. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Z, would you like to answer that one? <laughs> um, I was thinking that um, successful marriages on this, pan uh, on this, in this group, you know, it's giving me hope as I wait for my um, husband to come find me. Um, you know, it's, it's breathtaking to hear, um, you know, the, the different successful marriages on this panel. So, yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Come on, guys. <laughs> Kaylin, you leaning in. What do you think? <laughs> I was just going to say, I think, like what we're like one of the takeaways, like you're saying of the whole thing, I think we're in a time now where a lot of people are struggling. And I think that this panel has given a lot of us outlets, like as group therapy and healing sessions, because it's really like if people say like cliche, it was like rough out here. Like a lot of people are grieving and just going through different things. And yeah. so to be able to discuss that in a group setting without judgment has really helped a lot of people. Thank you, Kaylin. So that brings me to the next question. It says, why do you keep logging on to this talk? What keeps you coming back for more? Anyone? You learn a lot. Okay. You just um, learn a lot. Kenneth? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Kenneth? Yes. Well, first, first, I have to say, because of the host, because of your attitude, because of your personality, because of your disposition, because of the way you allow God to use you, the way you're approaching this. That's one of the reasons. The second reason is because I want God to use me and I want him to use me to, to help other people, to reach other people. I want him to help me help people not have to go through a lot of the things that I went through in life. And I also want to be able to help people that's going through some of the things that I went through in life or I've seen other people go through in life, make it through those challenges. So it, it makes me want to keep coming back because I had told you, but not too long ago, I was going to Thomas Nelson because I wanted to get into motivational speaking. I took a speech class, psychology class, an anger management class. I was taking classes until the COVID came because I wanted to help people. I had went to the um, Newport News City Jail. I was doing uh, ministry there, but I wanted to, you know, be involved in something like this and what you were um, talking about doing in the future. So it keeps me coming back. Thank you. Thank you. Well, okay. Anyone else? I want to say something. Yes, Steve. Steven. I said the same thing what he said. First off, you as the host. Secondly, you don't give me no time to prepare for no uh, textbook answer, and which improves my talking <laughs> skills. <and interview. laughs> I mean, <laughs> when they first started, it was kind of scary. I said, I can't answer these kind of questions. I ain't no married man. But then again, I realized being married is a relationship. And for most of my life, I've had a relationship with God to begin with. I've had relationships with my parents and my brothers. Yeah. So I have ability to talk and to listen. And this just keeps improving my my take on life. And I gotta say one thing too. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of misinformation 
going around from the time I first started grade school to the to okay. You going out, Steve. You went out. He's negative And those negative distraction. That's all I have. That's okay, go saying. back one more time because you you went out. So say that again about the distraction. I have learned from grade school to uh, to my age now that there have been a lot of distractions and misinformation. And by speaking and listening, being on this program, listening to what other people say, reading the book, and thinking about those difficult questions, I'm not scared, and I become the better speaker. Of, I, I'm able to talk more about what I feel. That's and cool. I think it's a beautiful thing because I know there's a lot of beautiful women out there, that, and there's a lot of good people. There's a lot of good people, a lot of good resources. Like I said last week, I didn't realize that there were a lot of people looking out for me Namely, my parents, my brothers, my teachers, principals, and pastors. And I may not reach out to them, but they reach out to me, especially God reached out to me to make me the, the better person that I am now. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else before we go on to this last question? Tony, we haven't heard from you. Tony, um... Not Tony Vaughn, but Tony Mayfield. Oh, well, I mean, I always think this this is a help help for as far as what I've been through, um, far as future, far as relationships. Um, I'm kind of like reserved right now. I, I'm enjoying my life. I'd like to say after being married twice, right now I want to enjoy my life. Having you know, my parent just passed away. Um, we, me and my mom always talked about that. She always said, well, Tony, you know, it's about what you, what's good for you. You've always been there. You've always been a good father, um, a good husband. Things didn't work out, but enjoy, try to enjoy your life. What's going to be special for you, whether you be married or not be married. Um, I'm okay right now. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of learning me now. You know, I'm, like I said, served, in, served my service for 20 years, United States Navy. So now I'm just learning me. Um, I'm okay. Not really. I've been stressed out far as women trying to get me to go that route again, but I'm not trying to go that route right at this point right now. So I'm I'm happy where I'm at in my life right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone else before we have this last question? And this should be for anybody. Actually, I'm, oh yes, uh, Robin. I was gonna say, um, even though, you know, of course we're now on the computer, but even though we're distant, we all find um, commonality in things that, different topics that have come up. So I just thank God for you, uh, placing you um, in that position, bringing us together. Because even though, like I said, some of us knew each other, a lot of us didn't, but he brought us together, commonality, and we're here to help people. I've learned a lot. You know, again, we all are in this together, trying to learn different things, even from a, a single person's perspective and from a married person. I hope people have learned something from me because I've definitely learned from each one of you all. Yes. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Robin. Okay, which leads us, and this is amazing because it leads us into this next question, which is what you just said, Robin. It says, we have not met everyone on in person. Perhaps that will take place next year when we have our first seminar. However, we have become a family and it is growing. Please tell how you feel about the people on this Zoom conversation and what they have meant to you. Now, before we start, I would like for everybody, because I'm going to go around individually and just let you all tell what you have meant to each other, what this whole um, experience has been <laughs> as meaning to you. Um, and then after that, I would like for everybody to um, raise their glass and we are going to toast. But one more time, I asked everybody to make sure that they have the books. So do you have your books with you? Would you please just hold them up like this in front of you, everyone? Because I just want to make sure. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Um, this is 20, 20, I was going to say 20 years, but it's 20 <laughs> talks. And that's amazing in itself. 
So we're going to try to make it to 50 if we can. We don't know yet, but okay. Let me start with, uh, let's start with Stephen down the bottom. Stephen. Are you talking about me? Yes, you. Yes. What has each person, what's this whole group as a family, what has it meant to you? Well, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed the different uh, experiences that people have had. It led to help me to, to, to know more and to think more. And it's been fun in, in a big way because it's almost like we all write little notes to one another. And we get a chance to read those notes and react to it. I mean, that's how they did it before they had phones and uh, uh, these smartphones. You write a little note and you might pass it on and somebody might comment about it. But I enjoyed the group, all of folks. And uh, I'd just like to personally tell y'all that and hope you could keep up and continue to be on, on the Zoom. I'm gonna try to continue to be on the Zoom. Uh, it's just been a good experience to me, a okay. positive experience. All right. We talk Thank about you. difficult things, but that's the way it is. We talk about fun things, difficult things. We got we can uh, we can speak our mind if that's what we want to do, and I don't mind doing that. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Tiffany. I would say it's been really nice hearing everyone's different perspectives. Um, because there, this is such a diverse group and um, so many different pasts in terms of, or presence in terms of, you know, some people have been married before, once or several times. Some people are married now. Um, some people are widowed or divorced or single or what so have you. So just hearing everyone's perspective and also, um, you know, in some situations agreeing to disagree, but then also hearing perspectives that maybe you hadn't thought about or hearing perspectives that make you think about your thoughts and how maybe on certain subjects we could change ours. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you. James, you're next. Um, basically, I, I, uh, what I like about the group is, is that um, it's a caring group. Um, it's, it's a very heartfelt group because I've heard people share things in this group that lets me know they're comfortable with me and I appreciate that and therefore I'm comfortable with them um, because we all know that sometimes people don't share with just anyone, you know, and the things that I've learned. Um, love language is something that I definitely picked up from this group because I wasn't aware of a lot of that until we spoke about it. And then when I turn and look at everyone, we are beautiful people. And um, it's just been, it's been amazing. It's been real good thus far and I can't see anything changing. And I'd like to personally thank you, Lynette, for inviting me to the group and doing mm -hmm. such a great job at hosting this group. And to thank everyone, you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It's, it's, it's been really um, informative, and I appreciate you all. Okay. Thank you, James. Appreciate you. Uh, Kachi? <laughs> yeah, no. um, I think one of the things I appreciate, other than you put, um, the host that's put this together, the host that put this together, mm -hmm. is it's a safe place. I feel it's a safe place that people, like you said, feel comfortable sharing and not feeling that, you know, people didn't get off the Zoom call and like, did you hear what she said or hear what he said or whatever? It's a safe place. We're, I think we're praying for each other, keeping each other lifted up in prayer. And um, I'm excited to the next the next level that we're going to go to with this um, group and hope to see you guys next year. Uh, I've loved hearing how uh, some of the couples have met, like when Robin and um, is it Steve met. I love their story when they you know met like at the gym and all this stuff, you know, so I, that was just great seeing how the couples came together and then folks that um, have since divorced sharing you know, some of their stories. So it's just been great hearing everybody's story and the fact that everybody's comfortable enough to share that in this safe place. And you guys get to hear my chatty husband talk a lot. <laughs> anything to we love it. We love it. Okay, Tony, you're on. We love to hear the chatter. Yes, we do. 
Well, I mean, for me, first of all, I thank God for the host is how that he led you to put this together and how that we are a collectively a family. We share all this on in the inside of each other homes. Mm -hmm. So we all become, we work together like an organism. So, you know, we all are individual. We all have different stories. We've all shared our stories and we all have shared tears and almost you know, been able to almost cry. But we also lift each other up. And that's the best thing to me about you listen to each other's story. You take the good, you take the bad, you live from it, you, you learn from it. And then you really pray for the person that really need prayer most of all. Yeah. And so with that and with God being in the midst of it, there is many levels to come. Yes, yes. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate that. Wow. Uh, Sylvia. Well, um, I was late coming into the group um, and I really enjoyed myself. I don't know if my, 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 my age has anything to do with it or not, but I, I, I feel like y'all are young people to me because <laughs> I'm the great, <laughs> I'm the great, I'm the great granny. And, uh, mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I've been, I've, I've enjoyed listening to you, uh, y'all talk, your experiences, and 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 the, and the group really helps uh, uh, people, you know, young people especially uh, to uh, to know that there is a different way to go, and that uh, this group has been very informative, and 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 I enjoy being being in the group and. I'm and just proud of my kin folks that they decided to do this. Uh, I'm proud of them. Okay. And, Thank uh, you. And, so I, much. I, and I just, you know, if you want me to keep on as long as I can, I would like to be a part of it again. Absolutely. Yes. We want you to stay on. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Tony, uh, Tony Mayfield. Um. Like I said, um, in life, uh, we all have different paths, north, south, east, and west routes to go. And this has been a, it's been real great to hear different people, different stories, the paths they have taken, some mistakes they have made. Uh, we all can improve. We're not perfect people on this earth. If there's somebody that say they're perfect, let me know. Let me find out who that person is. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I, I just thank you for just inviting me. Uh, some of my opinions, whether it's positive, negative. Um, you know, opinions that I've been through, everybody has negative, everybody has positive, but we all can learn from each other and, and do positive things and, and, you know, and make better choices in our lives. So I appreciate you bringing me on board for my decisions and my answers and my questions. Thank you. Appreciate you, Tony. Thank you so much. Kaylin? I'm very thankful for the being a part of the group. Um, I want to sum mine in like three words, wisdom, healing, and community. And I thank you all for the different perspectives, um, the ability and the space to grow, and the togetherness. Um, you guys have seen me cry on here without judgment. And I just appreciate that, especially in the time of like healing. Thank you. Thank you. Kayla. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Cheryl. I think um, I would say this reminds me of one body and, and each member or each person or couple is part of that body. And we make up that whole and based on what each one of us has gone through completes each other. And that's what I take from the table. Okay, thank you, Cheryl, appreciate you. Uh, Z? Um, well, I think um, I've enjoyed um, being on here each and every Monday. It's been a blessing. I don't get out much since the pandemic and this has been a constant and, and you know, a positive thing to look forward to each Monday and it's been a blessing and it's been a blessing getting to know each and every one of the, um, the people on the panel and and I've enjoyed myself. And of course, um, you've made this happen, Lynette, and, and you're a blessing to us all. Thank you. Thank you, Z. Appreciate it. I praise God for this whole thing. Uh, Kenneth and Renee. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful that you asked me to be here. I'm grateful that you valued my opinion. And I'm grateful that um, they have the opportunity to share. But the group has been a blessing to me. I enjoy hearing different people's opinions. And I 
told you last week that um, Steve, I really enjoyed hearing him speak. He had a lot of wisdom. And um, I like hearing people speak with a lot of wisdom when people make sense. And I, I have learned a lot and I'm looking forward to um, learning a lot more. And I, I get excited when it's time for the show to come on. I be looking forward to it. It's a big encouragement to me. It do something good for me, for my inner spirit, for my soul. Yeah. And I just want to thank you for inviting us to come up here. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank God. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay, Pat and Steve. Robin and Steve. Uh, um, well, I'm going to say that um, this uh, forum has taught me that you can't judge a book by its cover. Um, because you know we're born with your book, Ice Cream Sunday. <laughs> Give the plug. Um, however, we all have different stories and backgrounds, um, and we've been able to share our vulnerabilities, things that have hurt us, things that made us happy, and just different general things in life. So you know, sometimes you meet people, maybe you'll see people in a mall or stores, and you think they all got it together because of the way they look or the way they dress. And this just goes to show that no matter you know what, we all have some issues that we dealt with or dealing with. Mm -hmm. So I just thank God for you being obedient to God for bringing this forum together. And oh wow, I'm just sharing I'm saying... things that we wouldn't probably normally share. And we probably would have held on to with it. But I just appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you, Robin, really. Thank you. Steve? Well, I, um, just to keep it short, <laughs> um, I'd like to say, first of all, the panel, all of you all are a beautiful group of people. And I admire the fact of the matter that God has placed y'all in this position to express yourselves, to be honest, to be open, to give facts, true facts, Nothing friction here. Every, every, every nothing non-friction. Everything friction. So that's a beautiful thing to see you, baby, to open up and express yourself. You have, believe it or not, touched a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And this panel is is something God has put together through net, and I think it is awesome. So I love you all. I, I wish you all the best. And we can express how we think and how we feel and be accurate about it and be honest and trust and believe you have touched a lot of souls and a lot of lives. Yeah. So I really appreciate yeah. you. I love you all and I hope and look forward to seeing you again. But yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Steve. Thank y'all so much. Uh, Kim? Okay, um, I just want to say thank you, Lynette, for actually doing this platform. I remember when I used to see all the books. I was like, when are you going to put these books out? She used to give me <laughs> reading stuff, you know. And I was like, okay, when are you going to put these books out? And then right. when she said she was doing this, I was like, okay, I'm all for it. Um, I have always had the drive and passion for relationship and marriages. For some odd reason, I already knew that I was going to go to school for it. I, you know, but um, I have a big thing for communication and comprehending communication. And also, even though I do have my master's in family therapy, marriage and family therapy, also you all have been therapy for me as well. Um, a lot of people don't believe therapists need therapists. They teach us that in school because you do. Um, as someone did say, you go through what you go, you know, we go through things as well. Um, we have to talk with other people. Uh, so this has been a great experience, people vulnerability to express themselves and be open um, and, you know, just let things flow, no judgment. And I'm kind of, I talk, but I also sit back and watch and observe because y'all also uh, get scenario cases for me as well. Not, mm -hmm. you know, to be telling no one business, but, you know, it, <laughs> you know, it's some, you know, things that just come out that is very helpful. Um, as you say, everybody go through something. No one is exempt. Um, no one live, live this, oh, wonderful life all the time. And then also mm -hmm. your testimonies. Um, you had to go through something to get to where you're at, whether it be, um, as some of you all know, my testimony, um, my husband uh, was addicted to drugs. 
which we came through that. He's clean, clean for over two years now. Um, mm -hmm. And on love and on fire for God. And, you know, just hearing the different testimonies of what people go through and trusting God in everything to see you through, whichever way it goes. Some people do get a go through divorce, but there's still a testimony because you still can help someone else. Um, regardless of whatever the situation is, um, you have to look at it on the side of what can I learn from this to make mm -hmm. me a better person. So I just think everyone and meeting people. And so hopefully one day I will get to meet you all in person. So mm -hmm. it, it's been great. Okay. Lisa, thank you, Kim. Thank you so much. I just want to say chef's kiss to Lynette mm -hmm. for at least following um, God's instruction for you to bring this panel together. And you can see from the testimonies of some of the people here, because um, everybody that have viewed or have listened to your um panel discussions are not here to let you know how much the teachings, the sharing of the stories, people's lives, what has happened to them. You don't know how many people it has touched. Um, you're only seeing a few of us, <laughs> but I'm sure that the people, some of them may not have even contacted you, but you still have touched their lives. Mm -hmm. Something was said, um, someone shared a story that was something that they also experienced and they're really learning. They're really learning and I'm learning and I'm so glad I've met uh, a lot of you. Some of you I know, some of your family. Um, but a lot of you all, I have not, but I'm so glad that um, I said yes, mm -hmm. and I came on, and I'm usually a quiet person. I usually don't have too much to say, but um, I'm glad that I have been able to share um, my experience as well with you all, and again, thank you for not judging me, and I really appreciate um, everything that everybody has said and done. Thank you again, Lynette. Mm, thank you. Well, I'm just going to say this. Uh, never did I ever think that this would come about. I, I'm overwhelmed. I'm sometimes shocked at what God has done in this platform alone and the conversations that we've had. I love you all. I'm telling you, and I'm thankful that each and every one of you said yes to this conversation um, without hesitation, really. And it has blessed each, we've blessed each other, but most of all, I'm telling y'all, y'all have really blessed me. And I'm not gonna cry because this is God. This is all yes, God. And I'm, I'm, I'm just saying really, you know, <laughs> he gets all the credit, he gets all the glory because without him, I would we wouldn't even be on this conversation. and. You know, I, 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 I'm like a crybaby sometimes now because he's just doing some amazing <laughs> things. And because of that, I'm grateful. And this is a true testament of when you follow God's leading, he does not lead you wrong. And not only that, he will allow you to make sure that other people are helped. And again, I keep saying it and I will say it time and time again, it will never be about us we are on this panel to help other people. And in sharing your stories, we have helped so many people. I mean, the last two weeks, I've gotten emails and phone calls and texts from people who want to come on and share their stories. So again, I know this is God. I cannot, I won't take any of the credit. I'm just thankful that you all thought it not robbery to come on each and every week and share what you have in your heart. And we all just, um, we're just loving on each other. And I'm, I'm so grateful. I can't wait for everybody because I know all of you all, but all of you don't know each other. So I'm just grateful. And I, I just believe that the next time we get together, it will be wonderful and we'll we'll see each other in person that's what my belief is that's what my prayer is that's what my faith is 
so that we can get together and really know each other. Cause this, we have become a family. We have really become a family. And again, it's growing. So I'm thankful. So on that note, can everybody raise their, do you all have your glasses and your, and I am going to light this candle for this cupcake. Cause this is our cake celebration. <laughs> and this is just to say thank you all for everything I give you all a toast and many more to come God has blessed this so far and I believe the best is yet to come cheers cheers, cheers. cheers. you all have a great night thank you all for coming on and um, we'll see you next time Bye. 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 Bye.